settled at a certain office in a building called Adam House. The place we saw free was one of the offices for Eagle Air. Now, Pastor Laban trying to hire offices which had been rented by an airline. Uh, tell somebody, that's very ambitious. <laughs> but that's where our hearts settled. And we didn't know the reason then. So January 20. 10 is coming to 10 years in two months time one and a half months time we moved there and uh, the Lord began to minister to us 2010 politicians were preparing for elections the following year so campaigns began and they were heating up so those first few months in that office we got burdened to pray for the nation in a special way we had already been praying for the nation for a long time. And uh, eventually praying for the city. When the elections took place in February 2011, you remember? Walk to work, demonstrations began. And so the burden to pray for the city increased. And that's when the Lord began to speak to us that if you can successfully pray for the city, Jeremiah chapter 11 verse Jeremiah 29 verse 11 okay what who, who knows what it says that one we know okay I know the plans I have for you okay but earlier the scriptures talk about praying for the prosperity or the peace of the city where I've sent you as captive because in its peace and prosperity, you also have peace and prosperity. So the Lord was telling us, if you can successfully pray and engage in spiritual warfare for the city, for its peace and prosperity, I will give you the nation. Amen. So that was early 2011. So we began to really intensify prayer for the city, especially because of the walk to work demonstrations and so on as we began to engage deeper in prayer the president appointed our sister jennifer to take over leadership of the city that was april 2011 now we knew her and we knew her husband so when she first came into our office she invited us to pray with them and we told her we have been praying for the city this past one year and a few months and we had started praying every tuesday calling in leaders to pray for the city from our office because it's right in front of kcca parliament and those offices and so as we prayed from her office dedicating it i told her and her husband our office is just opposite your gate here and so we walked out of our office and just crossed to my offices. That time, her security was not a big issue. Uh, the big battles had not begun yet. Uh, so we just walked across and we prayed together. I don't remember if it was once or twice or three times. But then her security began to be a problem. So she said, can we transfer this Tuesday meeting to my offices where there is a little better security? And that Tuesday meeting has continued up until today. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, so God spoke to us about establishing that altar in the city. I believe this is important, although it's taking away time from my sharing. It's also on prayer. And uh, the rent was quite high. And we began to you know, we have been involved in business, uh, publishing books, publishing calendars, and other areas of business. And so we're sponsoring that altar, the rent and so on from our businesses. But because of the fact that it's so expensive, we began to call upon the body of Christ to stand with us. We did this mainly after the first seven years of being in that place. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, 
it became so heavy sometime last year that I decided to give up that office in the month of October. Now, I felt it was getting too heavy and maybe God was saying, you have been at the brook and the river, the water has dried out. So maybe God is telling us to move elsewhere. Do you remember the brook of Elijah? When the brook dried out, God told him to move somewhere else. So since finances seem to be drying out, <laughs> let's move somewhere else. So I took refuge in my wife's office in the building next to the door and closed the altar office. But we had been conducting lessons there for intercessors for Uganda. And we still had two or three classes on Saturdays. So I went over to the landlord at the end of September. I was handing over the keys, but requested the house, an Indian lady. Uh, can we still use the place Saturdays for this class before you get a new person to occupy the offices? And she said, it's okay. I'm not in a hurry. You can hold on to the keys until I get a new tenant. But please don't make the place look so obviously rented because I don't want problems from URA wanting to, you know, to collect their VAT and so on. So we agreed. So these ladies, <laughs> led by uh, your wife, Michael, <laughs> every morning they continued going up to the chapel, praying, and they had mats and a few chairs. So the only activity that continued there was Saturday class uh, for intercessors for Uganda and daily prayer from 7 o'clock until about 9 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, December, after two and a half months, this lady comes to me and she says, I don't want to look around for you during the Christmas holidays in case I get, I get a tenant. Can you return the keys? Now, let me wind the clock back to October. Two weeks after we left that office, after we closed the altar officially, our sister Jennifer resigned. Do you remember she, she re resigned mid-October? Mid-October. And we were very disturbed. It was as if the altar that was sustaining her had closed. Are you getting it? So I got so disturbed. And uh, now moving into December, she was handing over the city on 14th December. It was, I think, a Friday, if you remember. Tuesday of that week was the day I was to hand over the key to the landlord. I hadn't told my staff because I knew they would find it very emotional and very difficult to accept. So that Tuesday morning, I invited all of them to my office where I was taking refuge in my wife's office. And uh, I informed them, uh, please, I called you before you start your altar upstairs in the office, in the, in the chapel. Uh, please, let's begin by getting the mat and the chairs out of the place because I'm handing it over to the landlord today. And it was Grace who said, Daddy, you have made a wrong decision. <laughs> I told her, we don't want to be by here using people's offices without paying. Please leave me alone. It was a very difficult meeting with my staff. And uh, so they went away. Having decided Daddy has made a wrong decision. I don't know what was wrong with the decision. Since I was just handing over offices we couldn't pay for. Immediately we ended that difficult meeting. It began to rain. And it rained from morning to evening. Some of you may remember a certain interesting Tuesday in the month of December when the city got jammed with the traffic and there was hardly any movement. That was the Tuesday. 
So the landlady never turned up. When I talked to her afterwards, she told me I got jammed somewhere and I couldn't make it to town. Now the following day was Wednesday. We usually come into town very early, before 7 o'clock, to do a prayer drive around. And that morning, before 7 o'clock, somebody came to the office and handed me $200, contribution to the altar. After one hour, somebody turned up and discussed with me business, not to do with the altar, because we do business as well, worth 15 million. He pulled out his bag and pulled out bundles of money to the tune of 15 million. Put it on my table. I said, hey, this is serious. And he said, yes, I came ready. <laughs> After about another hour, somebody turned up wanting to a business and he paid a deposit of a million. That day we wrote receipts from morning to evening. <laughs> Praise God. Sometime in the afternoon, I called the landlady. I said, I didn't see you yesterday. She said, I got blocked by, you know, traffic and uh, the rain. I couldn't make it. I told her, I have your $4,000 um, arrears for our offices upstairs. She said, I'll collect it tomorrow. Thursday. Collect it tomorrow. Now, going back to Wednesday, that evening we left the office at about 7 o'clock. It was getting dark. And I was driving. So my wife in the passenger seat, when we reached monitor offices, it was now dark. We got a phone call, so she picked the call. Somebody was calling from our offices back in town saying, I brought your money. Where are you? We said we have left offices. I told my wife to tell him to hold on, we're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so my wife blurted out and said, today money has been chasing you since morning. <laughs> now, that incredible story convinced us God wants that altar there. Amen. Amen. So the following day, I meet with the landlord. I pay her the $4,000 arrears. And she asked me, when are you coming back into your offices? And I said, well, sometime during the Christmas holidays, we'll find a day to put back the furniture and so on. You remember the following day was Friday, when Jennifer was handing over the city. So we came into town early, did our prayer, patrolled around the city. And when I was around Nakasero Hospital, God spoke to me. Today Jennifer is handing over the city and you are not at your station. So I told my wife today I have to work from my office upstairs in the office with a window facing the city because God is saying that's my station. So I went and picked the curtains Beautiful curtains, which we hadn't washed for some years. <laughs> My wife said, please hold on. Let's first wash them before you put them up. I answered, <laughs> Today's matters are... Uh, today is a crazy day. We ha I have to be at my station. So I picked the curtains, got a toast to put them up, and then told everybody to get ready because I have to work at my offices that day. Praise the Lord. So that is the place where we work from with grace. The thought which has been coming to me as we are entering the 11th year, because we are completing 10 years this year, is that this altar is very important for the city and for the nation. It is right at the gate of parliament, gate of KCCA, gate of all the government offices, gate of um, uh, Minister of Finance and so on, gate of President's office, gate of Prime Minister's office, and all the important installations of the nation are within half a kilometer of our office, including State House. It is just, just beyond Sheraton.
which is, you know, in, uh, in our view from our officers, central police, all of these places are within reach of our officers within a few minutes. So it's a very important altar which God wants to hold on, wants us to hold on to. Somebody say amen. The thought which has been coming to me is people like Grace who come from this church. You should be the ones contributing for her sustenance there. I want to talk this over with your leadership now that I've blotted it out. It's a bit difficult to, hold, to take it back until we have discussed with your leadership. <laughs> you know, so that, you see, the importance of it is this. It's not that just the money. It means you have a stake at the altar of the city. Yeah, and instead of just Grace and her husband and family being exposed to the spiritual warfare that we engage in, are you getting me? And maybe their children being hit, because for us as a family, myself and my wife, the last 10 years have been incredibly difficult to do with our family. The devil has hit us left and right. I believe it's because we are holding on to an altar which is hitting national forces and global forces. Okay. So to protect ourselves, we need that prayer cover. Now, when the church stands...